as the leaves start falling down And the shadows above the town I can finally see you now I see the fear inside your eyes I see the pain in your smile I can finally see you now Wednesday, April 4th. I'm here at the West End Gun Club. Took a vacation day because I needed to take one more before the pay period's up because I'm at my cap. But I needed to come out anyway because I've been pretty much lagging on coming out to the range or uh, haven't had time. And I wanted to test the Alpha Brass. So I have Alpha 6 millimeter native Creedmoor Brass and I'm going to get I've got loaded up and I'm gonna test out. It's Alpha small rifle primer but it has the 0 0.080 flash hole uh, diameter which is the standard one people don't like the uh, ppc style bench rest uh, 0 0.059 0 0.060 type flash hole on their brass because of the you know their pins for their the decapping pins on their dies some people don't have writing dies and, or, and some people use a lead die like myself with the universal, the universal decapping die, but don't want to turn down the decapping pin. So some people just don't like that with, uh, so they don't use Lapua neck down and they won't use the Peterson small rifle primer brass. But anyway, this, I wanted to test out Alpha. A lot of people are talking about Alpha brass, saying it's pretty good. So we'll go ahead and give it a whirl. It's just after 0700 at the range, and I got here about 645. And I think I'm actually the only person here. Um, I would expect to hear some gunfire out in the member side, the, or sorry, the, uh, well, the member, the full member side, the, the rear or back ranges, but there's nothing going on. And I'm quite surprised on a Wednesday, usually there's a couple guys here trying to get some early morning shooting done, but I guess maybe people had a long weekend and had to go back to work, or people are taking the spring break with their kids and they're on traveling, but, it's kind of empty out here, surprisingly enough. And so it's starting to get brighter in the morning, so maybe I can start waking up early again, really early, like at four, to get out here at five to do some shooting uh, on a weekday, which is a lot easier for me because I can get stuff done and not shoot on the weekend, yet still get stuff done on a weekday before and not have to miss work. Uh, I think we're all lined up here. Yeah. A lot of people ask me about the, constantly ask me about the lab radar because um, they've seen some of my videos of me using this thing. And frankly, I, I have nothing still but good uh, comments on this device. It works great and I'm sure a 
Magneto Speed will work just as well. And to be honest, I still want to buy one just to mess around with, with the, uh, to have it secured to the chassis as opposed to the barrel. But uh, I think either one will do fine. If you want to go with Magneto, Magneto Speed, which is a lower cost of entry, definitely go for it. It's better than an optical-based chronograph, which I wouldn't, I just don't think it's worth buying anymore. So I got some of the loads with Peterson brass. I still got a few, what do I have in here? Oh, it's written on the side. I loaded a lot, the rest of that, less of the batch of 50, or the rest of the batch of 50 with uh, 41 grains. But since this is a cold bore shot right now, it is a dirty bore though. I've got probably a good 80 rounds through the gun, through the barrel, 100 rounds through the barrel, hasn't been cleaned in a while, as far as duration time maybe a couple months. So I'm probably gonna clean it after this range session because of all that buildup. It's not much round count, but it's like how much time that stuff's been sticking in the barrel, so. But I wanted to go ahead and shoot some Peterson, the Peterson load, just so I can um, get that cold bore shot out of the way, which does affect my velocities by about 50 feet per second on this barrel. It's just the way it works, but. So I don't wanna have to, uh, dig into, it'll, I won't affect my stats for the loads that I made up with the Alpha Brass. So clean bore cold, dirty bore shot with what I believe is 40.8, 4350 with the 105 is 3055. I'll go, just go and shoot a second round to see what the differential is for my own edification. Oh, 3059, only a four foot per second difference. I'm wondering if the uh, clean bore has more to do with the uh, the differential velocities from the first shot than the actual cold bore itself. Even though I found with Peterson Brass that I started too conservatively and I ended up going all the way up to my normal or my Lapua load with Peterson Brass, I still started conservatively with the very, very conservatively with the Alpha Brass simply because of my experience with Starline Brass with large, the larger flash hole, the standard side flash hole with 6.5 Creedmoor. So I needed a full, about a half grain less than Lapua brass for 6.5 Creedmoor. Um, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna end up needing a half grain less with this brass with the uh, standard uh, flash hole diameter. But we're gonna go ahead and start off with 39.5, which is really low um, when I'm using 41 as my my regular load or my my actual load so we're starting to full like a whole half one grain and a, one and a half grains underneath or below just to be safe wow definitely pretty slow 29.67 at 39.5 With the first string of the day with the Alpha Brass, 39.5 grains of 43.50 with the 105s, we're looking at an extreme spread of 20 and deviation of 7.4, which is okay. 7.4 standard deviation is good. 20 extreme spread is high, but this is a load that I won't even want to use because it's, it's fairly slow. But let's move on and continue with our string or our testing. Um, I will be working five rounds each of 39.5, 39.8, 40, 40.2, 40 40.3, 40 40.4, 40 
40.5 and 40.8 and 41. Uh, hopefully we won't see any pressure signs when we hit 40.5 and we can go all the way to 41, but we'll see. Not much has been going on as of late. My shooting has been infrequent. I think between this vlog and the last vlog was about a month of time. Been spending a lot of time just messing around with the Jeep. Um, been posting a few videos on that and some of the upgrades I've done which uh, I haven't upgrade I haven't published a video yet but I did put a power tank onboard CO2 unit in there so that's pretty cool it's, it's a nice way to facilitate my airing up or after airing down for off-road use I did a trail run with the San Diego Jeep Club a couple weeks back which I, d I don't think yeah I didn't I didn't vlog that or anything but I'll probably post some a blog post about that later and I did my own run of the B Canyon truck trail and the San Jacinto Ridge truck trail by myself, which was not actually not a good thing. Probably shouldn't do that solo, but I did it. Um, I had, I did some recon online of what that trail was like. So I had a relatively good idea of how that was going to pan out. And surprisingly enough, you do get cell signal out to most of that, the difficult portions of that and the, if there is anything, the more difficult portions of that. But uh, probably not advisable to do that kind of thing as soloing on the trail, especially when you don't have as much experience, you know, when you have a lack of experience like I do. But anyway, that's what I've been up to lately. Although, I'm also a top of the concern for me right now is the status of shooting videos or gun videos on YouTube because of what had ha transpired in recent weeks plus what transpired the other day um, at YouTube headquarters. They have to say, they've been taking a hardline stance on firearms videos. And I am concerned that my content will no longer be be allowed on YouTube. So I have been exploring alternatives. Everyone, some people have recommended Vimeo, and I haven't used Vimeo for my own stuff simply because in the world well, I, I have not tried Vimeo for my own stuff simply because they charge for it. It's technically free, but you can hardly upload anything. You got limits on bandwidth and storage. So I'm not sure I'm willing to pay 20 or 50 bucks a month to upload all the content that I create. I'm almost willing to just host it on my own web server, but the thing is you have to really concern about the streaming capabilities of that. Um, the amount of bandwidth you could potentially use up. So, uh, I'm not entirely sure what my status is going to be as far as contingency plans, but I'm, I'm looking into it. And if anybody has any ideas, um, I'm all ears. The data for 39.8 grains, 4350 is average 2988. Um, 2988, extreme, uh, extreme spread of 15 with a standard deviation of 6.3, which is pretty good. Not bad. Forty point zero got tighter as far as data. We're talking an average of three thousand. Standard deviation of four. Extreme spread of eleven. But the group is not good. Um, Through one round, and the last round dipped. But you, if you're assuming that the three closest that are touching each other are indicative of this 
of this uh, load, then it could be pretty decent, but it's only 3,000 feet per second. But I'm gonna go ahead and take a short break and let this cool down a little bit and just sort of refocus since I don't want, I want to make sure I'm not throwing rounds. So keep going. It's actually a bit colder out here than I expected. It's got that little morning breeze going on, like that two to three mile an hour wind. Uh, and I'm wearing a thin shirt underneath this. But one of the uh, things I've been thinking about the past several weeks was the, uh, or is a Ruger 1022 takedown rifle. I kind of want to just have a, a backpacker type rifle to throw into the Jeep or the truck whenever I'm doing like an, a trail run or overlanding type thing out in the SoCal trails. And I think it'd be kind of cool just to have just a uh, small rifle, utility rifle type deal, whether it's like a survival type thing or just a plink, assuming you're out in the area where there's open shooting. And then you never know, right? Critters. Um, he may need one or may need to get rid of one. Uh, so it'd be nice. I thought it, was, it looks interesting as far as the takedown rifle. I know that there's mixed opinions on how well they function or as far as how accurate they are, but I don't expect much out of it. Uh, if anything, uh, again, it's just a utility type gun that I'm looking to get. So I'm pondering that. I think the base models you can get for about 350 locally here in California, so I might get one and then just swap it out for a Magpul, the X-22 backpacker stock and leave the iron sights on there and then eventually maybe just get like a, an aftermarket Volkhortsen bull barrel for it and then probably do like the Magpul. They make a, a mount that fits on the forehand of their start, backpacker stock that you can put a red dot sight on there. So I'm, I may do that. But I figure 350 after tax, just under 400 bucks for that kind of t utility type rifle. Be kind of cool to have, so I'm thinking about that. Although I need a plan for when eventually my American Rifle Company uh, nucleus action comes in. Not sure when that's going to come in. I don't think those will ship till mid year, maybe June, July. But when I get that, I'm not even entirely sure I'm going to build it anytime at the end of, you know, before the end of the 2018 year, so. Kind of cool to build it, but at the same time, got other projects I want to work on, like the Wrangler. Uh, so we'll see. Not much stuff going on gun-wise, just doing working with what I have right now. I probably need to start taking this thing out to more competitive shoots and try to do the, do the club shoots here. I mean, I don't have much many rounds on this gun. I think probably under 300. I have to look at my round count log. So. Might as well stretch it out. I mean, you bought you bought the parts, built it, or had it built. May as well shoot it. So, I'll might start looking more into uh, club shoots for the PRS style stuff. Unfortunately, Camp Pendleton, we're we're in a lull where they're trying to get pr their lease renewed so they can use the range, the Santa Margarita Gun Club. So right now, there haven't been any any matches there for the past, I would say, five months. Uh, and it's unfortunate. And even when they do get the lease renewed, the w question is whether or not they'll have it renewed so they can shoot anything outside of 5.56 and 7.62 NATO, or you know, well, you can shoot 308, um, but they're limited to those those caliber slash cartridges. Uh, and that kind of ruins it for a lot of people who want to shoot F class because everyone's who's shooting F class open, they're shooting obviously other cartridges that are more optimal for. F class, and I obviously I like to take this out to a thousand over at Camp Pendleton, and uh, you know test it out there, test my loads, and see how well I can shoot this thing uh, with a puller in the pits. Barring that, I may just I need to go out to Desert Marksman Range sometime with this and start shooting some real 600 tests, and maybe find a place in the desert to shoot a thousand. Um, desert Marksman Range, you can shoot a thousand, but it requires scheduling because you technically shoot over the 600 yard 600 yard line as well as all the other bays so uh, we'll see some will argue uh, the Smith that put together this rifle for me you know he was uh, 
making the point that the way I shoot when I'm testing is I'm always removing my head from the stock and I'm single loading and I'm doing all this stuff. I should probably shoot a string of fire to test without moving off the gun to be more consistent. He has a point. Because me coming off like this, resetting, I mean that's just a I mean that's just an obvious thing that is of one factor in why my groups may not shoot as tight as they should be. Um, I don't know. I just that's just the way I operate as far as when I'm testing. I like to come off, take some notes and whatnot. Given the lab radar is recording all this crap for me, so I shouldn't have to write it down in a notebook. Maybe I should just let the lab radar do its thing and record the data for me. But old habits die hard, right? So this is a four round string, unfortunately. 40 grains. What am I shooting at? Sorry, 40.2 grains is average of 3,006 feet per, pe per second, which isn't much higher than the previous. Uh, standard deviation of 3.1 with a extreme spread of seven. So it's getting really good. Um, can't argue against that. Jumping from 40.2 to 40.5, that first round was kind of scaled fast and went to 30, 41 feet per second, but everything started to go down from there. The average is 30, 29 feet per second, which is still not on pace with Peterson brass with the same, with the same charge weight. So 30, 29 feet per second average, standard deviation is 7.7, extreme spread of 20. So this one's starting to open up again. I'm going to take a short break here because i got to walk out there and put a couple more pacers on to shoot these last two, two uh, five-round strings. Recently, I've also been getting some inquiries regarding the West End Gun Club and membership. I don't know anything about what the membership is right now as far as cap. All it, I'm, the general rule is there's a waiting list. And as far as I know, if you just need to get on that waiting list and eventually you'll get into the club. And I've heard rumors that uh, when I was talking with my uh, with the RSO and a couple other guys were hanging around, they were new folks and they actually got their membership only after about three months of waiting. So don't quote me on that one. You may have different um, results with that. But if you're looking to join the West End Gun Club, just get on the waiting list. I can't imagine you'll be waiting longer than a year. Uh, and if, I mean, it's a long time, but at the same time, if you want to join, you may as well get on the list now. All right, I'm reusing some a board that already shot with Peterson brass. So the ones with the check marks, you can ignore. And these were the empty ones I started, the U shape. So I started up here with 39.5, 39.8, 40.0, I threw this round. 40.2 and 40.5 and they're actually shooting pretty well i would say about a, better than half minute about a half minute half minute each they're not very if you do center to center groups so i think they're holding up pretty well um across the board and hopefully f uh 40 41 grains will shoot tight but i'm guessing it's going to be slower but we'll go get some pacers at the top here and uh, get back to behind the gun. Just for reference, these are the first two rounds I shot today with, earlier in this segment with the Peterson brass just to warm up the barrel. That, the first round is the higher one. And then I was just trying to shoot that shot hole with the second shot. So just touching. And it just proves that this gun is actually shooting pretty well.
looks like the uh, for 40.8 we're still averaging only 30 36 feet per second standard deviation is only 53 with the extreme spread of 13 which is respectable the group is a little bit more wilder than I expected first round shot high but it's definitely not scaling as far as velocities as I was expecting. So it looks like I'm gonna anticipate that 41 grains will shoot about 30 feet, 30, 50 feet per second. So at 41 grains of 43.50, we're looking at average of 30.52 feet per second. Standard deviation of 2.6, which is incredible, with an extreme spread of 6. And if we look at that group when we walk out there, it's going to be really tight except for that last round, which I let it drop because I was, I was squeezing the bag in a weird, different way, and I knew it. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and cease fire because there's a guy on the range. I think he's getting ready to set up his target and we're already done anyway, so. Or at least, uh, I'll probably just let him set some targets out and I'll go ahead and shoot a little bit more of the Peterson brass while I'm here. Decided to bring any other guns. It's a quick look at the Alpha brass with the small rifle primers. As you can see, there really isn't any pressure signs. Everything looks pretty good, as far as I can tell, but We'll take some photos with um, the macro lens just to give more of an idea of what this really looks like as far as the primers, but there's no flattening from what I can tell. And there really is no extractor or ejector marks, or well, extractor, I don't have an ejector, but there's no extractor marks. So I think we're pretty good as far as the alpha brass and pressure signs with the lows that I've tested so far today going at the 41 grains with only an average of only about 30, 50 feet per second, 3050. Um, but yeah, looks good so far. Here's a close-up of the last few groups of the day. This one is 40.8, which isn't all that great. First round is kind of high. Um, I threw that one and the rest of them centered up right here. Then this is 41.0, which is really nice. This is four shots and then I threw the fifth round. I know for a fact I dropped that one, but this one shot a great standard deviation and extreme spread. So, but it's only averaging 30, 0, 3050 feet per second. So I'm definitely gonna have to increase the, the charge weight with alpha brass to get it up to 3,100 feet per second. Here's some Lapua brass loads that I shot up. Not all that great, it's about six rounds. Uh, got really sloppy there. And then um, here is the last rounds I shot today, which is off the tripod. Barely holding two minutes of angle, but I do need some practice there. It's almost 9.30, I packed up all my gear and I just rolled out to the to the back bays to check out what kind of work they've been doing back here. And Bay 5, which is a small bay usually, they've actually extended it out quite a bit. And I can probably pan for you, pan it out. So you can see here that the bay is actually a little bit, quite a bit longer. It used to only be about a 15 yard bay, 20 yards for pistol shooting. And so they've done a little bit of work of to just to make some of these bays a little bit more useful so people aren't trying to use the ones forward of that that impact area where they try to shoot some rifle um, 200 yard rifle so it's nicer doing this at least trying to renovate some of these other bays that were kind of small trying to extend them but anyway i'm pretty much done shooting 
gonna run some errands today, um, do some stuff that I want to do that I can't take care of on a week weekend because they're just too busy to handle it on a weekend. Uh, not much else to say right now as far as um, I do need to come out and the Alpha Brass. I need to bump up my loads from 4350, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Probably gonna go up to 41.5 at least. Maybe even try to push 41.8. It looks like Alpha Brass small rifle primer with the standard flash hole diameter is not, doesn't shoot, it requires more more um, powder charge than Lapua or Peterson small rifle with PPC, PPC style flash holes. But I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then um, try to come out here another weekday morning because uh, I'm only going to need about 20 rounds to test that and I'm going to write an article on that and post that up later this month before the end of April. Um, so that's pretty much it. I don't know what I'm going to shoot other, th other than testing the Alpha Brass. going to try to make more effort to, to shoot a little bit more pistol because I have not been shooting pistol at all um, the past several months. So I'm going to go ahead and work on that. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Stay tuned on my blog for that the Alpha Brass write-up, and then if you're interested at all in what I've been doing to the Jeep, um, I have I'll have some other videos posted fairly soon, showing off what I've what I've enhanced this Wrangler with, uh, such as the power tank, uh, the CB radio video, and the write-up. I've already posted uh, yesterday, so check that out if you're interested in the CB radio install. Did a walkthrough on that. Um, it should be fairly informative for people who are still pondering if you have a, a Jeep or any other vehicle that you're trying to install a CB radio. Should give you an idea of what you might, what you'll need to get one installed and set up. So, anyway, that's pretty much it for today. It's April 4th here at the West End Gun Club on a Wednesday. Today is my vacation day from work. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you at the next vlog.